Well, hello everyone, welcome to and welcome back to my channel, Maniacal S10 Shopping Garage. I'm Mike. First and foremost, a happy and safe Thanksgiving to everyone out there. Appreciate it so much. <clears throat> I appreciate all my subscribers and the viewers. And I do share it to Facebook. And I go over the uh, title, the at icon, Maniacal S10, small letters, and it'll take you to my channel. <clears throat> So if you haven't subscribed yet and you find my, I hope you do find my videos informational, educational, and helpful. I hope you subscribe and build up my fan club a lot bigger. I appreciate it so, so much. Now I'm going to get the camera turned around and show you what's up for today on this Thanksgiving day of 022. Beautiful weather for the year by far. And we're going to be out to the shop a bit and out to the my 08 Pontiac G6 GT. I developed another antifreeze drip leak. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, what I have done, and should cure the problem this time around. So let's get the camera turned around. Give me just a second. Okay. Now, for, my, for the 08 Pontiac G6 GT, here is what we're working on today. The number for the part, 324 and 323. Uh, apparently, I've looked all over to the internet, eBay, all the resources I know of, I pulled, surmised my information. You cannot get the seal by itself you've got to buy this piece which i'll show you here shortly the piece i took off the car and the one i'm putting on which is a new piece with the seal goes on this crossover water pipe i'm hoping i'll have to replace this but oh or 324 324 and 323 goes right here now if i get this to focus right Bear with me. Here's the information you're going to need. This was pulled up at the auto store. It's all the same number. I'm just trying to get all the information on here for you. Now this obviously is a better way of doing it. Actually, I mistold you a little bit. Not the auto store technically. I went to a smaller dealership and got all this. I asked them to print it out for me. And here's where I bought this at. There you are. I'm also going to attempt to do this, a fuel filter, for an antifreeze filter. This will be a first for me, so let's see how this works out. Okay, now, this is the part, let me move this paperwork. From this part, I'll make, use that. Okay, here we go. This is the OEM part. That's not a bleeder hole, not a bleeder screw. That's an anchor bolt. Screw, bolt, it's a fastener. Now, for the O-ring seal kit that I bought some time ago at a flea market, it's not the right size. It does fit the part. And as I did the video on the crossover water pipe, it's right here. It does fit, as you can see, but it started leaking after a bit. 
Oh, two or three months. Oh, I'm not going to risk putting another seal on every two or three months to do this. So I looked and I looked and I looked. And here's this information. Okay. All for that. I don't know if you can get them at the auto store or not. The kit, that is. I got that at the flea market. Now, the one I took off my car. And here's the information. The best I can get it to you. Okay, and here is the new one. Now, look at this O-ring. And look at the one I used. If it'll focus for us. Whoops, sorry about that. That's better. Hope you see the big difference. Now I'm gonna to try to do a comparison for you. Try to. Look at the difference. Huge difference. Not everything I do works out the first time. And sometimes it don't work out at all. But research development, test and tune, trial and error. It, never, it didn't cause any major problems. Like I caught the drip, I heard my belt squeal, and I checked it out, and I scratched my head, this and that, that and this, thinking, sleeping on it, phone calls, internet, etc., 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 and nothing. So, now you see what the difference is. A much, much better seal. Okay. Now, I did get this seal from the auto store, not Rue Chevrolet, at O'Reilly's. It's got a lot of life into it. It's a new seal. I'm just not going to risk it. I'm not saying the part's bad. I'm just not going to risk it. Let's take a look here. This is like splitting hairs right now. And you can see a difference. It's not worth the risk to me. Hopefully not for you. So I'm just... It was just pocket change I got, got that for. Oh yeah. White Castle. Yummy. Okay. Now. Give me a second here. The one we're not going to use. The one that I am going to use. Make sure. Got the right one. Yeah, you can see that one's used. This is not. Okay. Now. This all works out, which I don't doubt it will. Here's your info. And. Fill filter. I'm going to use it for an antifreeze filter. Okay, I already got one out of the car, so I'm just going to put this back up. Well, off to the side. Okay, give me a second. Get you some information here. Okay. This should do it. Here you are. At O'Reilly's. But that's what I paid for it. Actually, for two of them at, at that price. 12 13 and change, I suppose, for two of them. That's it. Okay. Now then. Let's get out to the car and get this on and see how it goes. Um, I gotta get my tripod out there. Lights off. And 
pause and be right back. Okay, we're outside to the car now, as you can see and tell. Okay. Once again, hope you find this information helpful and hopefully a shortcut to cut through the chase that I go through. And then next time I need to do it, I just go right to it. And the same for you. And let's say once before, I share my videos on you. YouTube, of course, my channel, Michael S10, but I also share it to Facebook at Michael S10 and I pop up. All small letters. But I know I said in this video I'm not using these O rings or seals. Well, I'm going to change out the one on the, I call it overflow because it wasn't leaking but I'm gonna change it anyway I just didn't want to risk the one on the other fitting this is not as major and it's a quicker easier change if necessary and I'm still gonna be looking up trying to find that o-ring I'll probably have to buy the tube and I will bring you an update on that okay give me a sec Excuse the background noise, it's the traffic, but it's being Thanksgiving, so a lot of people are traveling. Okay, first things first. All right. The trusty 13 millimeter socket. I'm using a six point extension, Matco 3H drive, or whatever you may have it'll work. Try to stay on the picture all that I can video and so you can see what I'm doing and hopefully this will help. I did not find any torque specs for this but it's a fragile piece so it don't take much. I hope I drain out enough antifreeze to do this. I drained uh, about a half a gallon to a gallon supposedly. Well, hopefully. Uh, let's see what we've got here. Yeah, I see a little bit dribble, so hold on a second. Get my big self out of the way. Try to keep this from dripping any more than what it needs to. Well, I probably still got to do a pulley clean and a belt clean, hoping to save the belt. If not, I bought another one just in case. We don't like squeaky belts. Squeaky belts. And for the snug of a fit, you would think it wouldn't leak. Yep, there that is. So, off with that, off to the side. We definitely don't want that mixed up. I'm right here shortly digging us some turkey. Or Thanksgiving food, should I say. So please tell your friends, family, about my channel, and hopefully look hope, hopefully they, they look me up. Okay. And of the new piece. And we're 14 minutes into this. A little bit of grease here on the seal. Don't take much. Here's your basic grease. And if this seal don't hold up, I'm going to I have to buy another piece and bite the bullet. I won't use grease on the seal next time. But I don't see where that's hurting it any. I've used grease on the seal many times. And in she goes. Okay. I didn't want to have to buy this part. I just wanted to seal it. Well, my dealerships, parts stores, 
other sources, they don't want to do the seal, they want to do the whole piece. Darn on that. Always go hand tight first. That way you don't you don't be strip well, not strip but cross thread anything. You don't do any damage. Just do it up by hand. So give me a second, I'm gonna go get my inch pound torque wrench. Okay, here it is. Snap on. Flea market special, but it does work. Okay. I'm gonna try to get me in the picture a little bit here now. Hey, how is everyone? Okay, since the, the more fragile, smaller bolts, fragile parts on the 08 and my 010, I've done the 79 inch pounds, I do the 80 and round it off, so I'm going to try it on this piece. So let's see how this works. This is my doing, so be very careful. If you find a torque spec for this, let me know, because I haven't found it yet. We're going to round it off 80, so I'm going to do 40 the first time. And it's got its scale right here. Newton meters, inch pounds at 80. Okay. 80, see 40. Lock it in. Hook it up. See what we can do. Look so far. Unlock it. Let's go on up to 80. And actually, hand tight or 80 inch pounds or newton meters, I may not be tightening up enough. That may also contribute to it been dripping. But we shall find out. Okay. 80. All right. We're going to back this off to zero. And once we start it, she warms up. If she starts dripping, I'll, I'll snug it up a little bit each time. See what happens. Because I don't really see where that makes a factor because... Give me a second. Let me look at something. I may be onto something on this. See this where it's beveled? Well, there's a beveled seat in here. It's like a, if I'm saying this right, compression fitting or flare fitting, that may help it seal. Plus the O-ring. I may not have been having it tight enough. I'm learning that some of this too. And I believe the seal is the main sealant of it. Okay. Now with this, uh, we'll put that right there for now. Get the grease out of the way. I'm already taking the seal off of this. find a seal for this. I want if you don't remember the number for it, we're just gonna find what it's going to fit. Being somewhat of a loose fit. Well, I thought it was going to be. Nope. Okay. That seal's too big. I was trying a R as in Roger 08. Let's go with a R, R as in Roger 07. Uh, 
That's a used seal. I know we don't want that. We're working at this. Oh, and by the way, if you see this good enough, down in there, there's rust and some gunk down in there. So, pretty good thing I'm putting that antifreeze filter in line. Let's see what we got here. Looks like the only seal in this kit that's going to work. I used them once before. Let's see what we got. Okay, this all the way. Got a little ahead of myself, a little bit of grease on this seal too. One one dab should do it. A little bit of smear to it. And that's got a flare right there beveled into it. So now let's see what we've got. Let's thread it through here. Just about got it. Okay. And snap. Yep. Hold on a sec. This should do it this time. And there we have it. Okay, let's see what we can do here. That's not gonna work. Okay, hold on. No harm, no foul. No foul, no harm. I don't wanna look at it. Seal's too big. Okay. Hold up. Put this back in, grease and all. Not gonna hurt a thing. Let's try a ours and Roger 06. That whoops. Looks like that's gonna do it. Put this back up. It's going to be a little bit more of a challenge fit even with the grease in there, on there. But we'll get it. We'll make it. Okay. Yep, that's it. We just another dab of grease. There we go. Beautiful Thanksgiving Day for 022. It's not often we get weather like this for Thanksgiving. I've been around for a while. I'm 63. That gives you the idea on that one. Voila. We have connection. Now just hope the bolt fits. So far, so good. I've got some more antifreeze. I'm not going to just use it just yet. I'm going to use distilled water. Oh yeah. You don't want to ever put... You don't ever want to put... Unless you have to... 
or you just want to tap water and cooling systems it's got iron deposits calcium deposits reason why the older homes with the galvanized water pipes lime up because of the hard water the still water you don't have to worry about that batteries radiators cooling system you don't want to I just go with the extra and put distilled in it when I need to. Okay, so far so good. Now we're done with the grease, I do believe. Hope I don't prove myself wrong. Okay. Now then. Air tube over there. And this bolt goes to here. I may have to undo this and go about the other direction or other way because I'm going to use some clear tubing versus the factory black rubber. So let me get this turned around a little bit. Hope it don't jar our eyes out. Let's see what we got. And we're almost a half hour into this. And has this got it to where we can see what we're doing on the video? Get my hand down here and see what we got. Yep, you'll be able to somewhat. Okay, well, it's going to have to work for now. All right. Yeah, if you can see it, I kind of, oh, get it up here to where. Why do I not see this yet? Oh, okay. I have to be way up here. There we are. I found me now. There's some gunk in that pipe. It's not going to want to focus too good. You can see me, but you can't see this so well. Now, go figure. Okay. Now. All right. Let's see what we got, what we can do. And you want to follow the arrow, you can see it, for the flow, which is going to the overflow or surge tank. All right. Try our fit here. See this for the first time being done. At least by me. Like see what or what will fit. Okay. Try to keep this as straight as possible. Over here, from that, right there. I'm going to figure out my fitment here. I'm going to be almost right on it. Okay, that'll work. And my cutter. Be right back. Okay. I'm also going to use my clamp tight hose clamp setup. All right, let's see what's what here. Andy Denny cutter. Okay. Well, guess what I just found out? 
this hose fits too loosely right there by far and for a bit of a flange not going to fit good so the clear hose is not going to work I was hoping it would. So now back to this. That's a bit loose, okay. This one's not gonna work. And it is three eighths. Still too loose. Let's see what we can do with the factory hose for the OEM. Let's see what our fitment is. Yeah, I'm able to go with this. There's no doubt of that now. All right. Let's see what we got here. Figure out the fitment. That being a preformed hose, I can hit this one right on the money. Just use the standard pliers for this one. Okay, that one's on. That one's on. I'll, do, I'll try that clear hose another time, see what I can do. I'll bring up the date and what works out on that one. I'm going to put one on, on my Aveo. All good on the fitment. Yep, so far, so good. You can see. Some. Might be a change of plans again. Let's look into this chart up.
I may have to do some other modifications here. I'm not sure Jay asked yet. I'm uh, still looking into this. Get some of this stuff moved over here because I don't want to stop that or losing it. And we are at 36 minutes into this. Good. Not bad. So far, big, big show and a big test to be able to start it. Yeah, there'll be a bit of a belt squeal to it. Everyone see it every time. Now that was a good snug fit. Oh boy, is it a snug fit. Okay, hold on. Oh wow. Yeah, buddy. Okay, dokey. Yes, might need a little bit of grease on this part. Okay, that did the trick. Alright. Well, hope I won't use grease this time. But if I need to, I will. I'm just not using the heat gun this time. We'll see how this works. I might prove myself wrong on this one. It's happened before. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay. be the iffy part. Don't need no grease at all here. It's always somewhat of a loose fitting. Alright. Give me a second. Okay. See what we can do. Got some more of these. I don't get to use my clamp tight kit every time. A little later on, I'll swap it all over. If I do, I'll bring you up to date. some of this stuff on all this stuff all over here. Get ready to see what we've got. She's gonna squeal a bit. Hopefully, no drips leaks, and let's get ready to find out. No leaks or more leaks.
Are we getting this? Let me bring this up just a wee bit for you. There we go. And we are... Just over 45 minutes into this. Okay. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I won't have to add no antifreeze. I got the gun, like I said, just in case, but I'll use the distilled water first, depending on how much I'm going to need. I'll have to judge that, yeah, by sight and rule of thumb. Well, these two little rings. Let's see what she's going to do. Like I said, expect a little bit of squeal to it till I can get that cleaned off. That is a chore. so good here. get my big hand in the way. It wants to be the star of the video. Okay, let me get this turned around. So far, no leaks. Other than what I created a while ago, taking it off. Now, it was bubbling. There we go. That shows you she's getting air out of the system. That's another way of checking it. It's going to have a personal use. I like that. Cool beans. Groovy, dude. So far, so good. And no squeal. Oh, even a bigger surprise. We're 50 minutes into this. Well, the bigger question is when she warms up, opens up, any leaks, but as right now internally for the motor other than the radiator, which is not circulating through that yet. As you can see she's bleeding off and no leaks. Yay, it's what we like. And she's 
she was getting a little warm, which is good. Now, since gas stays for the most part cold, we're not talking about wintertime use or effects. Is that if this fuel filter changeover converted into antifreeze filter will handle the heat? That'll be another one. We shall find out. Well, let's see what happens now. So far, I'm only looking at adding distilled water to it, if any. You need some space up here for two circuits. You just can't fill these all the way full. There's no room to expand. Well, let's see. Take a look, see what we got. Well, we got a couple of dribbles, that's about it. Whoops, sorry about that, went off of that. Now the pressure down, that's lowered down. Okay. Get this back on there and let her do her thing. I know the video's moving a bit. I'm looking at something. Let's take a look down here a minute. Let you keep an eye on this. See if we did anything down here when I took the cap off. She's dribbling it, yeah, she's dribbling a little bit as you might be able to jump. Let's go and take the cap off. Cap back on, she'll pressurize and hold now. Looking good so far. What we want. Now that dark line right there, by the looks of it, is only what's left of what I didn't get wiped off a few minutes ago. So far, so good. I'll keep the update on this. side check a tip and while we're at it take the chalk out I'll back her off the ramps see what we got going on in here almost ready to open up Thursday wise whoops sorry about that trying to get my finger out of there She's got, by the looks of it, about another 20, 30 degrees. 
Let's back her off and see what we got. Level her off. There we go. Let me get to where I get the phone out of here now. Should be getting some heat. Yeah, buddy. There we go. Turn that off. Just makes it harder for it to heat up. That's a that's the original miles. Let's head out here and see what we got going on. And she is and the tip is a very comfortable, nice 61. Okay. I see no steam. Do you? So far so good. All's warm. All systems are good. And as you can see, she's ex the antifreeze is expanding. I looks at it right now, I would say the old ring that I used out of my kit was bad. The old ring that I got from O'Reilly was work. But I bought that piece to be on the safe side for now. I don't plan on taking this back off again. All right. We're almost an hour. Okay, I'm getting ready to finish time and putting this thing up and get ready to take a test drive in it and see how she works. So give me a second and I'll be right back. trip hazards. All is smelling good, all is feeling good, all is looking good. And as you can see, somewhat, as you get to circulate, now it's starting to bleed out. Now as you can see, from the other side, what everyone says, that's a bleeder screw, bleeder valve, bleeder tube, bleeder something and other. Nope, here it is. She's opening up, the purpose that's opening up now. She bleeds out this way. Looking, feeling good. Check the other side. And... 
from what's drying off now that you see that I couldn't get earlier. And she was dripping from there. All oh, looking good. So far all my modifications is working. Everything wears down and out over time. Let's check the tip and see what we've got. Oh, by the way, now you see the mark here for an expansion tank or overflow. It was down here. You saw the, uh, where it was down low enough that it looked like this. The color, it was a gap right here, figuratively speaking. Now look where it's at. As you can see here, where it's starting to circulate and it's expanded. We're doing good. Time to go in and check out the vitals. And at that temp now, temp gauge here of course, all's looking good. Let's check the heat. We're just over an hour into this. As you, as you can tell, see by my videos, I don't like to leave any gray areas or stones unturned. That's the reason why some of them are rather long. I don't take shortcuts doing this. And I, I admit, I'm only being human, I do forget things or leave things out. And I dearly and sincerely apologize for that because it catches up to me too and that means it'll catch up to you. So when I leave out, hopefully nothing, you catch and go on with it because I got to backtrack and think well darn missed that or forgot that hope it's nothing major all right here's what I'm going to do it's been a while since I've had her running so we're going to do this I'll get my hand out of the way start of the show and we're going to do this we're going to kick the AC on. Reason is, one, put a little strain to the motor. See what happens, how it goes. And two, the oil in the Freon system needs to circulate to keep up with it, keep up with and into the air conditioner compressor. It needs oil ever so often. So, I think I've done this in prior videos. Dead winter time, come out, start your vehicle up. It's got some miles on it. Let her warm up a bit. Kick the AC on. Go back in the house. Wherever it's going to be warm for you. Let her run for 10-15 minutes. Let that oil circulate. It'll make your air conditioner compressor last a lot longer. Because that clutch needs lubrication. I learned that from an old buddy of mine many, many decades ago. He's long gone. About doing that. And it has saved me a lot over the decades. So let's go out here and see what's going on. Little, little informational important tips here and there I can throw in that I remember them. All's good, no leaks. Yeah, she's at operating temperature. Or OT operating temperature, not overtime. Expansion. Overflow. She's right on the money. See, she's doing her thing. Now if I remember to later, that's it's all drying up now, as you can see. In their time, she'll be all drying off. I will keep you updated on this. All systems right now are way they should be good to go. And no squealing now. That's a big plus. Yay! Well, I've seen antifreeze that. I don't see it now. Obviously, we're good to go. Developing research. You've got it right here with this. All right. 
already, y'all. So, hour and five minutes into this. Tighten this up yet. That's the last of it. Take around the block and see what you do. But yeah. This is not the main flow hose. The main radiator hose, or the upper one, is right here. It's just um, bleeding out, which I don't see her bleeding out now. There's not going to be a super max flow with this that I know of, but with this filter here now, we can keep a closer check and see what's going on. See how she functions. But it's all looking good. So on that note, let me get this turned around. And like here I am again. There's my hand again. Okay. Trying to get to where you can see me better. And like you want to see me better. So hold on a second. Well, hopefully that'll do it. Get my hand out of the way again. Okay, everyone. Peace. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay warm. And uh, once again, uh, happy Thanksgiving and a blessed one. And like, subscribe, share the information, share my channel, please. And thanks once again to all my subscribers. Really appreciate y'all. Okay, so for like last 10, over and out. Until next time.